All right, guys, so um, let's talk about this um, assessment that you're going to take now. Now, I'm assuming that at this point that if you're at this assessment, you've already reviewed all your work from week one, your scores, and you've listened to my evaluation of how you wrote your answers and you've thought about how to improve from week one on ethograms and week two on behavior causes. Do not do this assessment unless you've thought about how to either continue to do really high quality work or how to make your work better. And as you do this assessment, you should be going back to your notes on how to write ethograms and your notes on how to ask questions to help you do this, okay? If you haven't already done so, create a folder in your Google Drive where you have those background reading and activity on ethograms and the background reading on behavior causes, okay? So uh, I'm gonna play a video for you. Uh, the video is going to show a squirrel and a snake, and you're going to be asked to write an ethogram of one behavior, okay? So one category with its description, and then you're going to be asked to answer or write out a question, what is the, and, and then answer that question showing me you understand how to correctly answer a question about behavior causes. So I'm going to pause, get that video up. All right, so this is research done into a behavior uh, between a squirrel and a snake. And um, maybe a little context here. The snake eats the squirrels, uh, particularly the young squirrels, but the squirrels have a defense mechanism. And generally, the squirrels are fast enough that if they see the snake striking, they can get out of the snake's way. So they use a technique, it's called a tail flag to wave when they are, when they see or notice a snake hiding. Um, we're gonna be evaluating the behavior of the snake. In this video, there's a snake coiled in the grass right here, and then we see this little tray. Now the researchers, rather than waiting to watch snakes and squirrels in the wild, because that can take a long time to actually like see enough interactions to do research, instead they designed a robotic squirrel to test the behavior of the snake in different situations. So that robotic squirrel drives down this track approaching the snake the same way the squirrel, a live squirrel, would approach a snake if it noticed it. So they will approach a snake and they'll actually try to get the snake to leave. And in this case, the squirrel is using a behavior called a tail flag. We see that robotic squirrel waving its tail back and forth. Pay attention to what the snake in the grass is doing. It remains coiled up. In a little coil, its head facing this the squirrel. Nothing happens. Okay. Now they repeated this several times. That's pretty much always what happened. Now this time though, they're going to show the robotic squirrel, but the squirrel's not going to do that behavior of a tail flag. So this is a different snake, different situation. So we get to see multiple examples. Look at the snake up here. Okay. Part of your when you write your ethogram, you're going to have to describe the snake, right? You're gonna to have to describe structural and relational details. This is a different snake. So we get to see multiple snakes and we're describing in general how the behavior looks. Don't just tell me what this snake does over the next 30 seconds, okay? So here we have that same squirrel, but in this case, it's not flagging its tail, which, and we notice some changes in the snake, slight changes. Now, as the squirrel begins to retreat, snake strikes. Now they're going to show that same behavior slower uh, at half speed and then at 10% speed so we can really see the detail of the movement. Okay, And this is going to allow you to describe the behavior in great detail. There it was in reverse and then even slower. Now I don't want you at this point to be focusing on why what's you know what the snake's logic or the squirrel's logic or anybody's logic is that's not the point in fact animal behaviors rarely do that because that leads to making assumptions and that shouldn't be part of your ethogram and it really shouldn't be part of your question about the causes but you're going to take this video segment that we just watched okay and you're going to now go back and um write out an ethogram about the snake so I don't, the, the squirrel's there. You're going to have to reference the squirrel as part of the relational detail. But I want you to write about the snake striking behavior. And then you're going to start thinking about the internal and external causes of that behavior. You're going to write the question. 
and I'm not going to give you the question. It's pretty simple. Just go back to the format for how to write a question about behavior causes. Write the question for the snake strike behavior. Then I want you to predict an answer, showing me you understand what it means to write a correctly predicted answer to the cause of a behavior. Okay, and I'll use that as your next assessment. As always, if you have questions, message me or come and visit me during my office hours. I'd be happy to go through this with you again or go through any of the assignments with you in more detail. All right, good luck. Thank you.